All right, let me compose myself. Yeah, I'm composed. I'm as composed as I'm probably gonna get. Today, I'd like to talk a little bit about electronic acoustics. First thing I wanna make mention of is this microphone is not what you're actually listening to. You're actually listening to a live set of microphones with four-way pickup that are picking up everything that goes on in this room. This microphone will have another purpose during this discussion. So, in a typical multi-purpose auditorium, which a lot of people have, whether it's high school, college, professional performing venue, auditoriums are no longer purpose-built. Uh, you used to have opera houses, you used to have places that were for choral music or for orchestral music that were really not doing other things. And these days, almost every auditorium for a variety of purposes has to do a multitude of things. So you may have to do rock and roll one day, you may have to do theater the next day, you may have to do country and western. It's, it's hard to say what you might actually have to do. But the idea being that no room is really good for all purposes. So a multi-purpose auditorium ideally should not be just a matter of changing the lighting and changing the scenery. It should be a matter of changing the sound of the room. And I know sound systems, people do it with the sound system. They mic everything and they create an environment by using artificial reverberation and effects in the console. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about changing the entire sound of the room you're in. Now, when you go into a good concert hall, you'll notice a lot of wood, a lot of typically irregular surfaces, a lot of things that break up sound and make the room warm sounding, diffuse sounding. Not at all like your typical, let's say, high school auditorium or your typical college auditorium, where the surfaces are predominantly things like plaster, drywall, painted concrete block, uh, usually fabric wrapped absorptive panels here and there. But you don't usually see a lot of wood, you don't usually see a lot of fancy surfaces because they can't be afforded. So what do you do if you want a room to really do a lot of things and do them well? It's electronic acoustics. Now, electronic acoustics is not surround sound, it's not an effect. It's an actual changing of the room you're in to sounding like a completely different space. The way it's done is a series of microphones are embedded around the performance area on the stage and they're routed to a series of computer programs that then route them to a bunch of loudspeakers throughout the room and reproduce acoustic energy back into the room that isn't actually there. So it's kind of like surround sound on steroids in a sense, but with surround sound in a movie where you have the speakers on all sides and in the back, they provide directional cues, but they're processing and close miking all of this stuff. Electronic acoustics takes every sound that occurs in the room, somebody coughing, whatever happens, and makes it sound like you're in a different space. So talking a little bit about this, I'm just going to do kind of a simple simulation. And this is, this is once again, not reverberation. I'm not feeding this microphone into this recording directly. I'm creating it in the room with some adjacent loudspeakers. And now we're in a different environment. Now this particular environment I picked is a little bit absurd. Let me see if I can find something a little less crazy. Uh, that is a cathedral. Let's go to something a little better than that. Warm cathedral. I don't know, medium church. Let's go to medium church. So, once again, this is a simulation. It's not a real electronic acoustic system, because to be honest, I can't afford one. But here in my studio, the reverberation time in this room is extremely low, the noise level is extremely low, but it's a very dry sounding room. So if I was performing classical music or even guitar music or singing, this is not a space I'd want to be doing it in. But this mic right now is picking up and reproducing an ambience that is not being fed electronically into this recording. It's actually occurring here in the room. And with this microphone, this is kind of a, like I say, a, this is kind of a cheap and dirty simulation. It gives you an idea of the kinds of things you can do. You can change from that room to this room. So now I'm in a vocal chamber 
So if I was doing a certain style of music, this might be more appropriate. If I wanted to have a completely different small room, let's say, or a room with an echo in it. For some reason, I wanted a room with an echo in it. I could get that. So the idea of electronic acoustics is you create environments that are saved for different styles of music. Now the primary difference in the way you design a room for electronic acoustics and you design it for other purposes is if you can't afford fancy diffusive surfaces and all of those things in the room, they're nice to have in either case. In a room that's going to be electronically controlled, you need to start with something more like this, which is a reasonably well-balanced room that is relatively, I won't say dead, but definitely not highly live. And you need to be able to control it upwards to whatever specific condition you're trying to create. So if you're trying to create a concert arena sound, you need to be able to do that. So in the design of the room, you have to eliminate any actual echoes. You have to eliminate frequency imbalances, so you design differently. If you can afford diffusive materials, which we'll talk about in another segment, what those are and what really are diffusive materials and what aren't, if you can afford those things, they're still good ideas. But the primary thing is to have a room that is neutral. So you design the room neutral, usually works very well for speech by itself, and then for different styles of music, the electronic acoustics come into play. Now the other factor that's very critical is noise. And it's something that's overlooked in a lot of rooms. People don't think a whole lot about it. But if you have background noise, this room just went from an NC-15 to an NC-35 noise condition. I'm going to crank it up to NC-45 just to make it a little absurd. And then in the scheme of things, this is a true, perfect, wonderful NC-45. And this is a true, perfect, wonderful NC-35. But let's just say it wasn't so perfect and wonderful. It was something more like this. And then in that room, I add the electronic acoustics. You'll notice that the electronic acoustics enhance the noise. So if you want to hear the nuances of a room, the more noise you have, the less you're going to hear the nuances of the room. Now, to be honest, it's the same for instruments. Harmonics and subtleties of instruments get lost under mechanical noise as well. And depending on the frequency contour, if the mechanical noise is more mid and high frequency versus more low frequency, or in the case of something severe, this is a really bad system we recorded in one building. So if you had a system like this and you could suddenly convert it to that, you have a lot better shot. But ideally, what you really want to do is convert it down to NC20 or lower, where you can actually hear all of the nuances of the room. So some of the critical things to keep in mind with electronic acoustics, number one, it's not a sound system. It's not operated by a person. It's a condition that is changed by preset configurations for different styles of music and different uses. Number two, to implement one properly, you have to have a room that is well controlled and relatively quiet from a mechanical noise standpoint. And then the next thing about it is you have to have it set up and tuned properly in terms of microphone locations, locations of loudspeakers, so there's some design that goes into it. The cost of systems like this, it varies. Um, entry levels in the $100,000 to $150,000 range, uh, some of the typical high school spaces where you're doing the entire seating area as well as the stage, you could be closer to $250,000, $300,000. However, compare that to spending $700,000 on fancy wood surfaces, and when you do the fancy wood surfaces, you have a great sounding concert hall, and there will be a project we're going to walk through in a future segment where we'll look at beautiful room, great sounding room, has been fantastic, gotten great reviews for certain uses, and they've done some things in it they never should have done, and it was a disaster. 
So when you get a room that's really, really live, uh, you have a hard time making it go the other direction. So I'm a big fan of being able to control the environment I'm in, being able to control it in a way that really works. Next segment, we'll probably talk a little bit more about this. Uh, appreciate it if you would like this, if you liked it. If you don't like it, don't tell me. I don't want to know. Don't, don't send me any of that negative stuff. You Comments, yes, that would be great. And if you have any ideas for subjects, we're going to be looking at acoustics. We're going to be looking at lighting, stage rigging, um, audiovisual systems, LED panel displays, all kinds of things that we're interested in talking about on this uh, what is this called? A channel? Yeah, this is a channel. Um, we got guys who do this and they said this is a channel. So that's what we're going to be doing. And any ideas you have, be happy to hear them. And if you want to subscribe, we'd appreciate that. Anyway, that's it. Have a good day. Have a good day.